Let's move. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Um, Movie with Giddy. Um, today we're here at Truth Brew in you said in Shang. Glen Ashley. Oh, Glen Ashley. And today I'll be moving with Tulani Dead. Uh, the best to ever do it um, in strength and conditioning. And welcome to us. Thanks, um, thanks, Giddy. So yeah, we're just gonna get straight into it. Um, what is speed to you? as a strength and conditioning coach. Um, you've been with Springboks, you've been at the Sharks, you've been Sharks Academy, Vodacom Cup. And like, what is speed with you and where you've been? So for me, speed, um, just to put it in a simple in a simple way, it's a rate of which you move, basically from point A to point B. So how quickly do you move from point A to point B? That's just simply put, that's that's how I, I would basically define speed to anyone from a kid to someone who's a pro. It's just make them understand it's how quickly you can move from point A to point B or how quickly you're moving something from point A to point B. Okay. And then with that, like you you deal with a lot of professional players, not that other people aren't professional. But like when it comes to the definition in speed and training like what's the difference between gym and what's the difference in training so what's the difference between the two I, I would say basically if if someone says they're going to gym mm. it's literally they're going to do some resistance work so they're going to pick up a weight whether they want to do it as a lifestyle thing or whether they just train for um, can't overcome an injury or just you look healthy so that would be just gym for me okay it's just training there's nothing really specific you're doing but um you just want to lift some weights and you and it's something that you actually just enjoy and then when you look at training so training is a bit more specific now you you're training for something so you're getting into the gym you're lifting resistant weights but you're doing them with the goal in mind. There's some sort of activity that will follow um, that gym work or that type of training. There's a competition. There could be um, whatever competition. It could be a sport. It could be a leisure competition. But there's a goal that you're training for. Okay. Thanks for that. And then to get into strength and conditioning, like, yes, we do gym. Yes, we do train and have goals set. But... Is really conditioning important? Like, what's the chat around conditioning with athletes? Like, is it for all sports? Is it just rugby where, hey, we need to do conditioning, we need to top up? Like, what's the whole chat around that? I think um, um, conditioning has, has actually come a long way. Um, it used to be just seen as something that bodybuilders are going to do. Um, so now athletes have actually come to understand that it's not only the talent that's going to get them there, they have to put in some form of work and that work comes in the gym, which is conditioning. You've got to be disciplined to put in some work in the gym and be conditioned too. So I think um, now it's become something that is fundamental and it's, it's, it's a priority to be able to play your sport, to, to be able to, to perform. So um, conditioning is very, very important. I think. Um, that's why now we've got things like off-season and pre-season. That's where guys knock out some weights, they're putting in the numbers, they're putting in the hours, they're putting in the sweat. It's because they understand that has to come before they actually get out and perform. So um, so conditioning has become something that's really um, not only just a, a byproduct of I play sport and therefore I'm conditioned, but I'm conditioned to play my sport. So that's, that's, that's where it is at the moment. And I think it's only getting more and more important because um, guys are getting quicker, guys are getting stronger, and um, guys are performing at higher levels and standards. So everyone wants to be part of that. Everyone wants to be setting the standard. Okay. And then just to find out in terms of like where you've been and where you are now, strength and conditioning wise, like what's the one thing that has been the same throughout the years and what's the one thing that has stood out and you've had to adapt to to also help players? So one thing um, from from when I started strength and condition, I think strength work has always been there. You know, it's it's always been the fundamentals, it's always been the base. You know, 
And um, I still, even in my programs, even when I'm coaching even a pro athlete, even a youngster, mm. strength is just a base. That's where we start knocking out a few um, issues um, where you work on the guy's technique, you work on the lifting um, techniques, you work on just getting them strong enough to be able to handle certain forces that will come. So um, that is that sort of standard that strength has always been just a, an important thing. Um, and then what's changed over the years is that there's elements now of um, how quickly can you move things, how quickly can you um, explosive work. Mm. That's that's changed. And then there's now we get gadgets that actually measure those type of moves. So mm. now you've had to adapt as you go along this gadget that that tell you, hey listen, you're not lifting at a at that at that straight at that um velocity that you wanted to lift it. So there's velocity based training has become the next sort of yeah. thing, yeah, with the gadgets that come with it, you know. Okay. And then w- would you would you say actually looking at gadgets like has that helped us or has that like kind of taken away the extra work from players you know because growing up i used to look up to volvo like he did it like he had everything and now you're looking at guys like i could say your colin owls who are more of your gadget people like is there a difference between the two or is just are the gadgets just complementing Athletes, yeah. like, are they complementing the game or like are they taking away a lot from it? You know, because you get people who are like, I wouldn't say raw into conditioning and agility and speed, but like you could do things with them. And now it's like, ish, okay, no, this machine is saying you're meant to be hitting this, but yeah. you're not like, has that helped the game or is it like taking away a lot from the game? I think, I think it complements it because, um, what happens is somewhere along the line you need to be knowing your numbers you know in order to improve okay. and also what gadgets also do is that they they create a, a competition based on you we're not we're not comparing you to someone else but the gadget will tell you that you are lifting at this speed at this time okay. you know and it also some of them have got body weights involved in there so they specifically for you and i think um they shouldn't be something that um, is seen as I'm using a gadget, therefore I will be better. You mm-hmm. still got to put in the work. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you still got to put in the work. You still got to be racking up those numbers. As much as um, some some gadgets, you know, you, you actually tell them what to do, mm-hmm. and some gadgets um, are telling you what you're actually putting out. So there's also that that balance that you got to strike, you know, you can't depend on only what the gadget is telling you. It's also how you feel as an athlete. Do I feel like I'm actually being powerful or my attitude, what's my attitude while I'm lifting? And where the gadget can actually help you as well is, well, yesterday I was lifting 100 at this speed. Yeah. And um, today I'm lifting 100 at lower speed. So maybe I'm not actually quite ready mentally to train or I'm feeling a bit fatigued. So that's where also the gadgets sometimes have a, have a place to play. So that's why I say they, they, they probably mostly um, complement what we do and complement what athletes do as well. So they're not the enemy, if I can say. So they, they, they part and parcel in, in, in what we do. And it's, it's the future, I think, of, of what we do. And But I also take it with a pinch of salt in the sense that I still love the human element to training. Yeah. I still love guys wanting to get better, even if the gadget is not spitting out the numbers that he yeah, likes, yeah. but the effort that's there. Mm. That's what I, I quite enjoy. And I think with experience, I've seen players that enjoy the gadget for the sake of, hey, it's a nice numbers. thing to you, you know, numbers. Uh, but um, when it comes to performance, they don't perform as better, at, or better than the other guy who doesn't have a gadget, but he's just racking up big weights. He's, he's, he's jumping with maximum effort. So for him, everything is just about himself doing it to his best effort the whole time. So that's where the pinch of salt for me comes in with the gadgets. Okay. And then just to find out, um, we have strength and conditioning, we have your gym, we have training, and then we also have testing within sports. And then looking at rugby, because that's what I know, um, we've been running a lot from running away from repeated sprints. And now we've been introduced to the Bronco. 
like does that really show where you are strength and conditioning wise or is that just another test on its own and why bronco and not repeat a sports okay so um i think that uh, it's a personality of the snc or the strength of conditioning car um because repeated sprint requires you to bring out maximum effort with every single rep that you're doing so you literally it's almost like you've got to bring out power efforts yeah. all the time with the repeated sprint whereas a bronco is more like an endurance test so you slowly grade you can literally you can pace yourself on a bronco so that tests your endurance how long you can actually last but those, so those two tests, they are different tests. So you can use both. You're getting, once again, it depends what you, what are you looking for, what do you want to get out of your athletes. And, um, and then now you've got to come up with a, with a program that probably gets them better or you've got to train them to get them better. With that. But like I say, it's two different tests. They, some guys have, have gone away from, from doing the repeated sprint because... Um, it has got its challenges in a way. If you're doing a big group, repeated yeah. sprint is, is quite challenging. You know, it takes up time. But if you're working with smaller groups, you can definitely do the repeated sprint. And, um, and the Bronco, you can literally do the whole team at once. You know, the Bronco, as long as you've just got enough eyes and you've got a stopwatch. So it, it makes it a bit easier. So it's really a personality um, thing or the organization, what do they want? Um, some some guys like the endurance part and some guys like the power parts, you know. Okay. Um, before I give you 30 seconds, I just want four names. Um, one, your most agile forward. Two, your most fastest forward. Three, your most agile back. And four, your most fastest back. Like in the history of you knowing rugby. Yeah. So one, most agile forward. Two, most fastest forward, three most agile back, and four most fastest yeah. back. Don't explain. Okay, no agile board. forward for me, that I've seen over the years and I've looked, I'd say uh, the, the prop for Alan Dell, mm. he was for me quite an agile guy. Yeah. And for his size. So, um, agile, Alan Dell, and then what was fastest the next one? Forward. Fastest forward. Wow. Okay, fastest forward. I'd say Ryan Kankowski mm. was my fastest forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, Kenko was quick. Yeah. Who else? And then most agile back. Most agile back. Wow. Um, what is that England fullback? Um, Robinson. Uh -huh. Agile, okay. yes, that was him. Fastest, fastest back. Fastest back. Yes, putting me on the twist here now. Fastest back, Brian Habana. Okay, and yeah. Oh, guys. close one with my bimpy. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna say that too. Now we'll take that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and now just for thirty seconds of fame, you can say anything. Um, yeah, whatever, just go for it. No, uh, um, um. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity, firstly. And um, I've had the privilege of also training you. <laughs> so it's good to see that um, you, you've taken it to heart, whatever I've, 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 I've instilled or passed on to you. But um, yeah, basically, I yeah, wish you all the best. And um, that's basically will be my 30 seconds of fame. <laughs> and thank you, guys. Don't forget to come here and have coffee. Cut.